economy right now uh, is doing better than any other economy in the world uh, by a significant margin. Uh, we remain the strongest nation on earth by far. And there are no existential threats facing us. But if we make some good choices now, whoever the next president is, whoever's controlling the next Congress, there's no reason why we shouldn't own the 21st century. No existential threats, says Barack Obama. Uh, joining us now on the Molesburg panel, Brent Badowski, contributor for The Hill and former aide to Senator Lloyd Benson. There he is in his Green Bay Packers jacket and tie and garb. And congratulations to the Packers win. I fear it will be the last one this season. And Gianno Caldwell makes his debut, Republican strategist and founder of Caldwell Strate uh, Strategic Consulting. Gentlemen, uh, let me start with you, Brent. Um, so there's no existential threat to the United States of America? What, what, what is terrorism? What is ISIS? An existential threat. So what the heck's he talking about? <laughs> well, I wouldn't have said it if I were him. I support a much more forceful policy. I believe we need 20,000 ground troops to kill ISIS, uh, including 3,000 Americans and at least 10,000 from Muslim nations. I don't agree with the current policy. And the, the hidden story of the Obama presidency is that literally from the time he took office, every Secretary of Defense and Secretary of State has wanted a more forceful policy, every single one of them without exception. And they were ignored by the president on some key issues, and they were constantly at war with the White House staff composed of would-be Secretaries of Defense right. who don't know what they're doing. That's the real story I wish others besides me would report. G Gianno, what, 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 I mean, how could the man stand there is he living in, you know, Hillary talks about Donald Trump's alternate universe, and what the heck is Obama living in? Well, the problem is the president has been losing on ISIS, him and his administration. They didn't take the threat seriously. It wasn't until Pyrrhus on the day of, he said that ISIS was the JV team, and we found out that that truly wasn't the case. The only win that the president can pull out of this State of the Union address when he's talking about things like ISIS is a PR war. That's the only thing that he can win. It's unfortunate that he hasn't taken a terrorist group, one of the wealthiest that we've seen generating $4 billion a year. In addition to that, being a big group on the net, the Islamic State is a very serious thing. And these guys, they're even in, in the Islamic State, they're giving out parking tickets. That's how big their government is. And he didn't take it seriously. So the only way for him to leave this State of the Union address with his hell head high is to say, we've got it handled. There's no problem here. Right. And that's what he's going to do. He's going to list his accomplishments reportedly, uh, which is kind of uh, unique, you know, and, and it basically it's self-serving and it's a PR stunt. I want to move on to Hillary Clinton. We have new numbers out. She's trailing by 14 points in the latest poll, a CBS poll out of New Hampshire. Um, she's in trouble in Iowa. And she had this to say yesterday when she was asked about her white privilege. For me, you know, look, I was born white, middle class, in the middle of America. I went to good public schools. I had a a very strong supportive family. Um, I had a lot of great um, experiences growing up. I went to a, a wonderful college. I went to law school. I never really um, knew what was or wasn't part of the privilege. I just knew that I was a lucky person. I don't know. I'm not, I don't want to get into the, the, the weeds of how having a good family uh, you know, uh, is, is part of white privilege. I don't, want, I don't even want to go there. But Brent, let's talk about, what, if you want to weigh in on that, but also you wrote a piece for The Observer, Hillary's in trouble, and you believe that Biden is chomping at the bit to get in. Oh, absolutely. What I wish Hillary would do, and I've given up on Obama doing it, but I tried when I wrote a column that Obama's no Robert Kennedy. I wish Hillary would take a forceful position, as Bernie has, standing up for working people and poor people who are getting screwed in an unfair economy. I think it is a mistake when Obama or anybody else, including pundits on the business media, say how great things are. The reason so many people are angry is that there aren't enough jobs. There are too many people who've dropped out of the job force. There are too many low-wage jobs. There are too many exported jobs. There are too many part-time jobs for people who want full-time jobs. Right. And I think Bernie is speaking to that. 
He was uh, virtually endorsed by Joe Biden today on the Today Show. Yeah, Show yeah, a- absolutely. I, 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 I want to go to Giano. Uh, Giano, um, Hillary, first of all, you know, the poll numbers speak for themselves. What do you think is going to happen here? Is she uh, in huge trouble? I think she's in very big trouble. And that speech was meant to do one thing, to engage the black community and say, hey, you got somebody here that's going to support you. When in fact, she's the reason why black America in part is doing so poorly. Uh, when you think about the 1994 crime bill, which she, she, I call it a chief lobbyist for, she was the first lady, she visited members right. of the Hill, she did interviews, and this bill is responsible for the prison industrial complex. $2 billion for new prisons. I, I got you, Gianno. We got to leave it there. Gianno Caldwell, Brent Podowski, thank you. Coming up next is former Secret Service agent and author of the book, The Fight, Dan Bongino.